Today we're going to talk about how to find mentors and we're going to look at different ways to find mentors and then I'm going to show you how you can search for a mentor using Mentor City. and there's lots and lots of mentors who are available so you can start to explore profiles and decide who the right mentor is for you and I'm also going to give you some really good techniques and strategies for how to invite someone to become your mentor. So by the end of today, you're going to feel more confident to press send and invite someone to be your mentor. One of the ways that you can find a mentor is through your network, the people that you know, your friends, your family, your teachers, your religious leaders. Reach, think about everyone that you know, all the people in your network, and there may be somebody that can help you. There may be someone that can support you. And if they're not the right person, then they can recommend or refer you to somebody else. You could also look for a mentor in your workplace. The first step to doing this is to talk to your HR department or your learning and development department and find out if they have a mentoring program and if they do, how it works and how you can get involved. And if they don't have a mentoring program, I want you to think about your role model. Think about somebody that you look up to within your organization and reach out to them for a few minutes of their time. And remember that it's a real honor to be asked for advice and guidance. So don't feel like that it's intimidating to reach out to someone in a higher level within your organization because they'll, they'll feel that it's a real honor. You could also go to your school, to your college, your university, and ask them if they have a mentoring program. Many colleges and universities have mentoring program programs for their students, for their alumni, to connect with one another. You could also connect with your associations. So if you belong to an HR association or an association for accountants or supply chain people, you could reach out to that association and find out if they have a mentoring program and how you can get involved with it as well. You could also use Google search engines, social media. There is um, this one time I was trying to figure out someone who could help me with pricing strategies for, for Mentor City, for a tech company. And I Googled pricing strategies for technology companies and I found this one great video from this pricing guru. And I really liked what he was talking about, so I decided to reach out to him. And we had several conversations about pricing strategies, and we built a really great relationship. And later on, he started sending me his reports and his books and to get my feedback. And then the last way that you could find a mentor, and my favorite way, of course, is through Mentor City. And the reason why this is different is because everyone on the platform has put up their hand and said, yes, I want to participate in this mentoring program. I want to participate in this mentoring community. So I'm now going to show you how you could use Mentor City to search for a mentor and invite them to a mentoring meeting. To search for a mentor, click on find a mentor. You can then search for any skill that you'd like to develop or any goal that you have and the people who specialize in that skill will show up in search results. You could also search based on industry or job function or languages and meeting locations. Once I click on save and search, my top mentors are going to be displayed. So it's saying that Samuel is a three out of five in terms of compatibility with me and he also meets these criteria that are important. So I'm going to take a look at Samuel's profile and if I think that he'd be a good match, just like real life, I'd write him a note about why I'd like to set up an initial mentoring meeting with him. The following are some tips on how to invite someone to an initial mentoring conversation. Now, the first tip is don't ask someone to be your mentor. And I know that seems very weird because that's what you're doing, but you don't need to ask them to be your mentor because asking them to be your mentor is almost as intimidating, intimidating as asking someone to marry you. Right, So you want to ask them for a few minutes of their time and you don't really have any expectations that this is going to be a long-term relationship right now because it all starts with that first conversation and if there is good chemistry there, 
if you do, if the mentor does feel like they could support you, then you could start moving into a long-term formal mentoring relationship. But for now, it's just about getting started and having an initial conversation with somebody. In that invitation, you want to compliment them. So you want to compliment them on a project that they worked on, on an article that they wrote, on a YouTube video that you watched about them. So compliment them on their work, something that you admire or respect about them. Then you want to tell them why. Tell them why you would like to set up an initial meeting with them. For example, I'm looking to enhance my presentation skills and I really, really love the way that you engage people right from the start of your presentations. So you're telling them why and you're also complimenting them again in that example. And then the last part of the invitation is to ask them for a few minutes of their time and to make it really easy for them to say, yes, that sounds great. So you might want to say, oh, I'd love to have a few minutes of your time to pick your brain. How does next Tuesday at 10 o'clock work for you? And then they could come back and say, yes, that works. It's always meant making it very, very easy for that mentor. You're always taking control. You're the one who's always recommending the date, the time, so that they don't have to do all that stuff because it's the mentees or it's your responsibility to, to do that, to make their life easier. Now let's say you've sent that invitation and you haven't heard anything back from them. About one week later, you want to follow up with them. And in that follow up, whether it's a phone call or an email or a message within Mentor City to follow up, I want you to reiterate your interest. So just let them know that you're really excited about having a, a potential meeting with them. And don't feel like it's being pushy or too forward to do that. When you follow up, it actually impresses the mentor because they, sh they see how committed, how passionate you are about achieving your goals. I know for me, for a lot of invitations that I receive, I really respect if somebody takes the time to invite me, of course, because that, that's a big deal. But it, it's even better when I see that they follow up, that they've taken the initiative to reach out to me again. And this is very similar to the last tip on the invitation. Make it easy for them to say yes. So give them all the information that they need, the date, the time, or a few potential dates and times so that they could just choose one option. And then you could send them a calendar invite and you'll be ready to meet. So for the next steps, your homework for this lesson is to identify a mentor. And we looked at some of the ways that you could identify a, a mentor through your network, through your school, through your association, through Mentor City. So I want you to determine who your mentor can be. Who is that person that you're going to send the invite to? Then I want you to send an invite to them. <laughs> and we went over some tips on how you can write that invite. So write it and send it. The worst thing that could happen is that they say no or they don't respond. But if they don't respond, you're going to follow up. But the worst thing that could happen is that they say no. And I read this one book and this quote I love, it's rejection equals success. So the more you're rejected, the closer you are to being successful. Now the challenge for this month is that I'd like you to Google a specialized skill for a month. So specialized skills are the areas that you feel really confident about. And I was, one of my mentors recommended a book to me called Unique Ability, which is based on the concept by Dan Sullivan. And the premise is that your unique ability, your specialized skill, that's the area that you should do the most work in within your career and within your life. So once you identify what your unique ability is, it's always about doing more of your unique ability so that you focus on your strength. 
So for this month's activity, I want you to pick a specialized skill and you would probably have a specialized skill in your profile, something that you feel super confident about. And for this month, I want you to take that skill to the next level because you have to always enhance the things that you're super good at and take them further. So the same thing as last month, this month, I want you to Google that specialized skill every day and read a different article or watch a different video about that specialized skill and put one thing into action every day. And then by the end of the month, you'll be even stronger in your unique ability or your specialized skill.